see Starship. Um, so this is, uh, as you, well, you can really see it right there, obviously. Uh, there's the picture, more rendering. It's um, about 150, about, about 50 meters, so, um, you know, sort of 165 feet or so. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the, the ship, I think, <laughs> actually, I noticed we have an error in our ship dry mass here. My apologies. <laughs> I, I, I wish it was uh, 85 tons. <laughs> the sh ship dry mass would be approximately 120 tons. Um, this, the, the, the initial Mark I prototype is, is closer to 200 tons. And the, in series production, um, I think it'll probably be about 120 tons. Uh, if we get really lucky, it might get down to 110. 99 would be super epic. Um, so. Uh, but but in, in terms of its, of its usefulness, it'll be, be able to do about 150 tons with full reusability uh, to orbit and back. So this is, this is a very you know, big number for full reusability. Um, the, the, ver the very initial versions we're confident will do over 100 tons, but I think we, there's a clear path to uh, 150 tons. Um, and the... the the, the cost of, of, of a fully reusable system is basically the cost of the propellant, which is mostly oxygen. Um, this is th uh, three and a half tons of, oxy of oxygen for every one ton of fuel. So one of the advantages of, of, the, of, of this architecture uh, over the Falcon architecture is that we actually use more oxygen uh, per, per unit of fuel rather than, than less. So um, um, Merlin or the... the, the the Falcon architecture is about two and a half tons of oxygen for every one ton of fuel. This is three and a half tons of oxygen for every one ton of fuel. So when this ascends, it, it's really mostly liquid oxygen. Um, because when you get to vacuum, there's no air, basically. Um, so, yeah. Um, the next slide. So, yeah. So the, um, earlier I was talking about how Starship uh, enters and how it's controlled, um, it's, it's really qu it's quite different from anything else. It's really um, falling. And so we're doing a controlled fall. So with, with a rocket, you're actually trying to break um, as opposed to you're trying to create drag instead of lift. It's, it's really the opposite of an aircraft. You want the most amount of drag that you can produce. Um, and you want some lift, especially when you're in the upper atmosphere, mostly so that you, don't, you can control the maximum heating rate. Um, you want enough lift to keep yourself high in the, the low density portion of the atmosphere so you can, you can, you can burn off velocity and, and then, uh, so you want, and, 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 but, the, but then, you know, basically it goes like, if, if, this, is the, if this is the Earth, it goes, it goes at about a 60 degree, <laughs> my hand is the rocket, <laughs> it, it's, it's going at about 60 degrees. Um, so when, when in orbit, you're, you're actually going at around 25 times the speed of sound horizontal to the ground. So this is a, a very important concept that is counterintuitive to our normal daily life. Um, being in orbit, being in zero G, is not about altitude. It's about velocity. How fast are you going um, ho uh, horizontally? <laughs> this doesn't, um, so when, when something's in orbit, it's zooming around the Earth so fast that the outward acceleration, outward radial acceleration, is in equal to the inward acceleration of gravity and then you have zero gravity. This is why you actually have zero gravity. The space station, people often think the space station is stationary, but it's actually going around the world at 25 times the speed of sound, or about 17,000 miles an hour. It, look, it, it always looks stationary in the pictures. Um, and since there's no air, you don't have to have a, um, an aerodynamic structure. So you can be a totally crazy structure that, that doesn't look like it should be able to go 25 times the speed of sound, but it does. Um, and you can only feel acceleration, you can't feel velocity. So people sometimes like to wonder, what does it feel like to go 25 times the speed of sound? Actually, it feels like nothing. Um, only accelerating to there feels like something. So, so, the, so, the, so Starship is coming in. This, is the, if this, this platform is the Earth. It's coming in at, at hypersonic velocity like this, sort of at, at around a 60 degree angle. So it comes like this, and then starts falling, and then just falls like a skydiver. And it's just controlling itself, and then it, it turns and lands like that. So, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's incredibly elaborate explanation. Um, and then you can get a sense for it. This is much better. 
There you go. See? Same thing. <laughs> it looks better with the hand? OK. <laughs> but it'll look totally nuts to see that thing land. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Wow. Um, so.